Hi there, I'm Luke Ayres, and today I'm going to show you um, a simple setup, lighting-wise, which you can use to photograph almost any type of product with. See, if you want to sell things online, um, you know, you, you need to know how to make them look good, basically. And you make them look good by controlling the light, the lighting on them. It doesn't matter what camera you have, so long as that camera um, can be manually controlled with the settings. Now, in an earlier video which I made, I went over a setup similar to this, uh, wherein we've got our camera, and then we have it wirelessly connected to our lights. In this case, we're using flashes. The only difference between a flash and a light that's constantly on is that a flash um, well, it's a flash, it only lasts for a blink of an eye, but a flash is a lot more powerful than uh, a regular light. And so basically, um, if you watch, for starters, if you haven't watched this video first, then I recommend you go and watch that, because that's going to show you a lot of the things, so I don't have to repeat myself, about this setup that I have here. Alright? Now, what I have here, which I've already set up for you, it's very much like a cooking show, I have prepared this earlier, is what the ideal setup is to photograph almost any type of product that you have. All right, and let me explain it to you. Okay, good. So I have shown you already, yeah, the purpose of these things they being a light modifier, as in if I just, um, if this flash went off normally, it would be very bright and it would be very harsh light. But you can make one of these at home, get a picture frame, take out all the inside of it, then get some baking paper slash grease proof paper slash parchment paper and tape it over one side and the other side. All right. Today I just had some fancy aluminium, aluminum, aluminium, I say, uh, <laughs> tape. So that's why these things look a bit shiny, all right? So putting this in front of your light source, the harsh light will hit it, it will be sort of filtered through it, and the end result which comes out the other side is a softer light, okay? Now also this background which I have here, you can see that featured initially in this video. Now the purpose of this background, which is literally just um, a cutout long sheet of, it has many names, it's basically a flexible plastic material. Okay, it has many names, it can be called PVC or, uh, oh, what's the other? When I remember, I'm gonna tell you, okay? <laughs> but it's basically a flexible, white foam um, or plasticky uh, material, all right? You can get it from hardware stores or places like that, right? And, th and the purpose of it curving up like this is so that when you place your product on it, basically what you see behind it is a background that seems to, it doesn't end with like uh, a sudden, uh, you know, line as in like, you know, the corner of a wall or anything like that because it kind of disappears upwards, you get the, uh, the illusion that the background is like an infinite background. So the background just seems to go off to infinity. Okay, good. So if we've caught up on that now. Now, as I've also mentioned in an earlier video, there are particular camera settings which I've set my camera to, which means that uh, only these lights that I have set up here are going to be visible to the camera. Basically, I've set the camera settings so that the, the camera is, is very, um, what the camera captures is very dark. It's cut out most light that goes into it. So, which means that this light that you can see lighting up this situation here now is not going to be seen at all. And because these lights are so much more powerful, what this camera will capture is only these lights and the rest of this lights in this room right now will in comparison be pitch black 
Anyway, again, review the earlier videos to get a better understanding if you don't quite know what I'm talking about. Okay, good. So, now let's just quickly go over the, the arrangement I have here. We have the background, we have my camera, we have this little trigger which links to these, uh, to my flashes so that when I take the photo, these things are going to flash, okay? Good. We have the background there. Now, the arrangement that we have, let's, well, for instance, let's look at our first product, okay? We have here today, fresh from a novelty store, my friend, Foxy McJoe. So, Foxy, you are the... You are the star of the show for this first shot. Good. So you have your product in the middle here. Now we have two light sources, which uh, will be making him look quite cute. <laughs> our first light source, our main light source, you could say, is this flash here. You'll notice it's on a black stand. It does not necessarily have to be on a black stand. That is just a, a cheap photographic stand, which you can buy for 10 or 20 bucks. You can get one if you want. You don't have to. You can literally just stack it on a few books or whatever. The only reason it's higher is so because this is quite a tall uh, uh, light modifier, which you can see here, right? I just wanted to lift up the flash so it's in the middle so that what it uh, when it shoots through it, it will light up evenly uh, for all the dimensions of it, you could say. Okay, good. Now... This is a very standard direction to be pointing a light. Basically what it is, in terms of, okay good, if the camera's here, looking at Foxy, it is off 45 degrees to the left. It could be to the right, but I've put it to the left. Okay, that's the main light, so that's gonna hit him there. Now we have our second light, we have two lights in this, because basically that's gonna hit him here, and this is gonna look very nice, but then you're going to have a shadow sort of coming off uh, on the back side of him because the back side of him is obviously not being lit by that. So we have a secondary light here, which basically is almost 45 degrees in the opposite direction. So you can, you can almost draw a straight line from the front to the back. Now this is going to light him from both sides. Okay, good. So, Without explaining too much more, let me show you what this looks like. Take our camera, turn it on. All right, we're gonna make sure that these uh, flashes are turned on. For your information, uh, here are the camera settings that I've got this set at, okay? And then the flash settings, this flash is at 1 16th power, which means it's 1 16th of the full power that it could be at. And now let me just turn on this one. And this one, which is our main flash, this one is at one eighth power, which means it is twice as powerful at the setting it's at as that back flash, because we want sort of more light in the front than we do in the back. But you can feel free to play around with this. Now, just gonna take our, make sure the, the trigger is on. We're just gonna point this at Foxy. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna zoom in so that he's filling most of the picture. And hello, my friend. All right, good, three, two, one. Okay, there you have it, look at this. Now here's Foxy. Very nicely lit. The background just looks exactly what we wanted. It looks like the background goes on forever. We have a slight shadow there, but it's nice and soft. And Foxy looks quite stylish. That's cool. Now there's gonna be a second part to this basically where, like, your question might be, well, what if I want a completely pure white background? You just wait, my friends. Okay, good, but that's an example of one product, okay? Foxy, I'm done with you, thank you very much. What have we got next? All right, so now next, would you like to sell a pair of glasses? Okay, good. Now, keep in mind, whenever you're selling something, well, whenever you want to photograph it, it's nice to just clean it up beforehand. Because basically, any dust, any dirt, any grime on it, it's going to be annoying later on if you have to try and uh, 
remove any specks or marks. It's best just to kind of get it clean in the first place. And then here we go. Using the same lights, lighting setup, we do not have to change anything. This is this is like this is the lighting setup that I use myself personally and professionally. Uh, albeit I use different types of lights, bigger, you know, more professional looking ones. But this is sort of a one you can do at home. Um, but it, this is like the 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 setup, right? Now here we go. Here's the next product. I'm going to place these glasses in here. Now, as for angle, do whatever angles you'd like. I, I, I personally enjoy the 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna place them here. All right, let's take a photo of this one now. Excuse me if I'm blurring up your screen. Okay, good. I just pointed at it, I shoot. And boom, that's quite good as well, huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. Good. That's another example of a product. See, like if you have this set up at home, and you you just you, you make it match like this, like you can just you just go boom, boom, boom all night long, just like shooting as much as you want. Here's another example. All right, let's just say you sell candles. My goodness, the options are endless. Okay, good. Just clean this up a tiny bit. Okay, good. That smells nice. Now, put this in the middle again. Photograph this. Now, as you can see here, see, when we're talking about like using light to make things look good, you can see in this particular photo more why it is a good idea to have one light coming from the front and another light coming from the back. Because as you can see here, like let's just take an example here. I'm gonna turn off this backlight, right? I'm gonna take that same photo again. And you see the difference that a backlight makes. Okay. Now look at that, huh? I turned off the backlight, and now you can see that there's a lot more shadow there. But compare that to the shot with the backlight, and not only does it handle a lot of that shadow, but on the glass itself, it gives this lovely little glint to it. You know, you see that, you see that like, like little, little shininess, you know, it just makes it look like, whoa, someone knew what they were doing when they took that photo. Okay, hence why you use two lights. Okay, I'm going to turn this fellow back on. Oh, well, actually, maybe I won't. Now for the final product I'm going to show you, um, I get a lot of questions about, okay, how do I shoot shiny objects? How do I shoot glass? These sorts of things. Good news is, with a setup like this, you don't have to change a thing, my friend. All right, good. Wine glass. Whatever you want to put in this. Okay, good. Um, I'll leave that backlight off. Let's see what this looks like, just with that front light again. I'm in your way. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Look at that. That's quite cool, huh? Damn, that glass looks nice. Would you be happy with that shot? It's not bad, huh? But now let's make it look even better. Let's turn back on our back line. Let me take that shot again. Whoa, now that's what we're talking about. That's a glass there, huh? Look how shiny and attractive and I would buy that. Wouldn't you? If you saw that on your Amazon eBay page, I would certainly drink out of that. Okay, hence why the lighting and the angle of your lights are so important. However, you can feel free to play around with it. You can have this, you know, you should actually, like, I recommend highly that you actually don't just stick to this setup, but play around with it yourself, okay? See, the, see what the difference makes when you have it from different angles, including above. Because some things it's like, you know, you could spend hours like, oh, it's just not looking good, you know? It's like, I've tried 360 degrees of light and it still don't look good. Well, try the other dimension, my friend. Try rigging up a light on however you can coming from above. Because you have a whole sp spherical uh, possibility for angles of light. Okay, good. So, 
using this simple setup, using a list of equipment which I've listed below, um, you can create quality product photos in your own home. Now, stay tuned for part two of this video because I'm next going to take these same images that we've just taken now and let's see how we can make them look even better by processing them in the computer.